Hi, and welcome to the Fancy Comma YouTube. Today, I'm doing something I've never done. I'm branching out my content creation by doing a mukbang. That's where you eat and talk about something. So I went to Taco Bell. I got some Taco Bell. I don't even know what I ordered. I also got a Diet Dr. Pepper, because I like Diet Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper, if you're out there, feel free to sponsor us. Same with Taco Bell. Um, so I decided I would talk about working in Congress and I came up with this idea to do a series of mukbangs, one for each system, each branch of the US government, because I was like, and where scientists fit in in that. <sighs> How do I do this? Let's open this and see what's in here. So I worked in the Congress from twice. So this is a Mexican pizza. Hold on. How do I do this? So I got a Mexican pizza. Um, there's actually a Taco Bell at Union Station, which is like pretty close to Capitol Hill. And I went there and I got a big box, $5 big box, thought about life. And then by that point, I was $13,000 in debt. So, but anyway, what was I saying again? So um, science and policy could not be more different. If you have misophonia and you're fr you don't like the sound of me eating food, then you're going to hate this video. But This is pretty good. The Mexican pizza actually got removed, gotten taken off the menu of Taco Bell and then came back. So, wash down with some dark diet, dark pepper, has caffeine. Phenomenal. Okay, so um, science culture is systematic and collaborative, driven by ideas. So, like, also very casual. Policy culture is very ad hoc. People will just like do stuff. There con there's constantly stuff happening in the news. And so policymakers will constantly have to like respond to them and legislate about those things. Policy is often adversarial, like more so than science. Like in science, you can definitely have like, I saw this battle between two really important neuroscientists on Twitter. And it was like, one was from MIT. One was from um, Harvard Medical School. Since I have been affiliated with both of those places, it was so weird to see this battle happen because like, um, so Nancy Canwisher is a really important neuroscientist and she has done all this stuff to do visual recognition research. And then there's another woman, I forget her name. She works at Harvard, does MRI research and they totally just created this huge Twitter feud. That was pretty bad, but that's nothing like the kinds of things you'll see in Congress where it's like political, well, what the news calls political gridlock. Like one day I was working in Congress and I went to get a piece of pizza outside and there's this TV and it said, it shows like CNN. And it was like, I had just been in Congress. I just walked by some Republicans. It's like really chill. And then I was walking and I watched the news for a second and I kind of got felt gaslit because they were like political gridlock is happening. And it, it was the beginning of the um, Trump administration. So it was really chill. But anyway, politics is adversarial. Science isn't as adversarial. It can become adversarial. Like, <sighs> have you ever been to a conference where they, someone's giving a talk and then this other person's there and they don't agree with that person. So they will like literally ask a question and try to refute that person. Like, I think that's the most adversarial science gets. Policy is very much just like shut the other party down at times, which is like one really stupid thing about Congress, because the truth is that bipartisanship is what gets anything done. Like think about the legislative accomplishments of the Biden administration, the Inf Inflation Reduction Act was bipartisan. The Transportation Act was bipartisan. There was like a whole bunch of other things as well that I just don't remember, but I looked up who represents Taco Bell in Congress. So Taco Bell is headquartered in Irvine, California. Go Anteaters. And their representative is Katie Porter. So thank you, Katie Porter. This feels very bizarre to record. I need a paper towel. So what's it like to work in Congress? Well, so I worked in the House of Representatives, which if you know anything about Congress, so the Congress has, so the Constitution, Article 1, 
says, and this is part of federalism, that there's two bodies, bicameral legislature, and one is the Senate, which has two people from every state, and the other one is the House, which has people represent your state, your district based on how many people live in your state. So there's states like California that have a lot of representatives. There are states like Wyoming and Montana that have like very few. Um, Washington DC has like um, Eleanor Holmes Norton and she is a representative, but she's a non-voting representative. She just um, gives speeches and stuff. So on the house side, just imagine like hundreds of people just packed into this one building into just different buildings. It's like, it's very chaotic. I read yesterday to th this report I read about on the AAAS website, I'll link it in the description box, that um, apparently the number of staffers in the House and Congress are capped at a certain level, but you would never be able to tell because there's so many people working in the House, it's just chaos. But then when you go to the Senate side, because there's so few people, it's like so much more relaxing, but it's also much more formal, I think. I really like the House because it kind of had this like renegade aspect to it that the Senate just doesn't have because the Senate's really boring and quiet. What's it like to work somewhere like that? Well, it's nothing like what you would do in the science lab. So in graduate school, every day I would wake up, I would make my coffee, I would make my tea, extra strong tea, walk to lab, go to class, like everything scheduled out. I know what I'm doing every day. Like sure, my experiments might not go well, but I know I'm just doing that specific experiment. When I worked in the house, first of all, I had a master's and I was an intern there, which is the lowest level. That kind of sucked because like there were like new college graduates and me and we were on the same level. But yeah, the, every day, like for example, so I work there whenever, um, hold on, let me check somebody else with this. This is a crunch wrap. Um, I forgot I was saying. I think really loud. There's like no filling in this. There's some filling in this. The weird thing about crunch wraps is that sometimes the way they make it, all the sauces get like segmented into different parts of this. So like once I was driving and eating a crunch wrap and I was like, where's the cheese? And then I bit into it the last bite. All the cheese was there. Kind of like working in the house because you never know what you'll, you're going to get. So I worked there like right at the end of the Obama administration, the beginning of the Trump administration. And um, it was right when Donald Trump kept doing his different executive orders. So every day that I worked in a relatively progressive district, I wouldn't say progressive, I would say like moderate district, but definitely like heavily democratic. And every day Donald Trump would do an executive order. And every day we would get hundreds and hundreds of calls from angry constituents being like, we don't want this like at all, like Muslim ban, um, what was the other one? the cabinet appointees because it was like very early in that administration and every day we had to listen to our constituents and then draft messaging draft policies it's actually really hard to eat this while you're talking on here but one thing that com so you're constantly doing random stuff and then like there's no time so like for example i went i was a legislative intern so my job was involved, like there was a bunch of stuff I did. So I did like sorting mail, welcoming people, making coffee for people, which I never, no one ever wanted coffee. So I only gave them water, but going to briefings on different topics. Then after you go to the briefing, you have like an hour to write a summary of what you did. And you don't have like a quiet space to work in. You're just like in the office, like with everyone, with the constituents. Like one day I went to this briefing, I forget what it was about. And then it was like right when the Affordable Care Act was being discussed. And so we had all these like concerned people coming to our office because they didn't want to get rid of the Affordable Care Act. So they were just like chatting and I was trying to write this briefing memo and it was just like impossible. I think the house is the loudest place I have ever worked. Not like people yelling, but it's just, there's so much happening like every five seconds. When you're in an office building, everyone is just like sitting there working. It's designed for them to work. But in the Congress house office buildings, that's not the case. The point is for people to come there and interact with their legislators. 
So Congress has kind of this twofold thing. One is it makes laws. The other is it stays in touch with its constituents. And I think my office did a really good job of staying in touch with its constituents because they were all, they were always there. You might ask, where does science fit into this? Well, first, before I tell you where science fits into this, I haven't really eaten anything because it's impossible. <sighs> Look, I got a taco. I thought it's a special taco. I forgot. It's not a special taco. It's a, um, it looks like this. It's kind of cold now. It's a um, double-decker supreme taco. Cheers. I don't know. What are you supposed to say when you eat tacos? Thank you, Irvine. So Congress has like a hierarchy. I now have a pile of food that I just haven't eaten because I've been talking. Um, so the top of the hierarchy, obviously, is the member of Congress. Right below the, and, but the staffers always do more work than the member. And it's kind of an overlooked fact, but it's really true because like the Congress member just goes to votes and stuff. The staffer is the one doing the actual legwork and sometimes they're just as powerful as the member of Congress, not gonna lie. At the top is the chief of staff. They're in charge of everyone. Then after that is the legislative director. And then they have a bunch of legislative assistants that help them with the different policy areas. So there's different policy areas like armed services, women's health, um, environment, science, space, um, foreign affairs. Then under the legislative assistants, there's a legislative correspondent. They work like probably on like one issue, like they might work on like veterans or transportation. And then there, there's also, then at the very bottom of the totem pole is interns. We're like, I don't know where anything is. Walking flags around the Capitol. I did that once because you can request flags to be flown on the Capitol. And so you have to get the flags and like take them to be flown. I learned there's a lot of different steps in governing. A lot of it is procedure that has been passed on for years. So like, for example, like the voting, the way that things, the voting works, there's like a special the clocks in the house buildings, they ring. They actually make sound whenever it's time to vote. Where does science fit into all of this? So you could, so there are science fellows. So the AAAS has this thing where they do science fellowship. I really wanted to do one of those, but I learned that the Congress, they have like a couple of spaces every year for like a congressional fellow. And those are very competitive, but you have to have a PhD to get those. So I never got my PhD, so I never could do those. So um, it's really hard being an intern because you literally just work for free several hours a day. So you could theoretically be an intern. So if you, you think about how science could get it infused in this process, you could be a scientist and run for office like Rush Holt. There are a number of engineers in office, a lot of doctors, there are a few scientists. Then you could be an intern that knows about science like me. Um, once I had to write about a very rare genetic disease because none of the legislative assistants and correspondents knew about it. They were like, hey, can you research this and write about it? So I did. And it was, I had to do it really fast because everything in Congress moves incredibly fast and everything's incredibly professional. And you have to be both fast and professional and also try to be as substantive as possible. And I think that Congress really does. They do really rely on expertise a lot. Like they can read reports from the Congressional Research Service in lieu of being actual scientists. This made like a really weird hole in here. That was delicious. So like, for example, I think I went to like a number of different briefings on like diseases because I have a science background. Because like usually a lot of people that work in Congress are like government majors, political science majors. So it's just easier for scientists to go there and understand the science. I saw Amy Klobuchar. I saw a lot of like senators, like you're walking around the Senate. I don't know why it was surprising to me. Like you actually like see actual senators, but they're never shocked. Like, so like once I saw, I think Senator Corker and I looked at him and he was just, looked just like he did on CNN, C-SPAN. That being an intern kind of sucks because you don't get paid. I didn't get paid when I was doing that stuff. Wow. So what did I really, what was a real day in my life like working in Congress? Well, first of all, 
I had to make sure I had the latest fashions from Forever 21. I had a bunch of gift cards that I got from doing surveys because I was pretty broke. I was like freelancing before I got this job. And so I went and bought all these Portofino shirts at Express. So, and then I had like Ann Taylor pants. Um, but yeah, I lived in a hotel for two and a half months. I was there when Trump first took office and I actually wrote the email that welcomed the Trump inauguration ticket holders because um, Congress gives out the inauguration tickets. So if you wanna work in Congress or you wanna interface with Congress, you have to know that they're very professional. They're driven by personal stories. Like, have you ever listened to a policymaker talk? It's like entirely, it's not facts. It's like, I'm humbled when I go to Detroit and I see the auto workers at the picket line and I'm like, then they like talk about this one person's life story. Whereas in science, you're like, we did a randomized study. There were like 500 participants. This is the systematic evidence that we found. Politics isn't like that at all. It's very like one-on-one. -on -one. Just like me and this taco. And the other thing you should know about Congress is that it sets the budget for federal science funding, which I'm going to talk about them more in my, my video on the executive branch, because I've been doing deep dives into how science fits into every body of um, government. And so there's this guy named Vannevar Bush, who was a dean of engineering at MIT. And then he was, um, and then um, he went, founded um, this company that ended up becoming Raytheon. And then he went to the Carnegie Institution in Washington, DC. So he kind of got his science policy background like I did going from Boston to DC. But he had this idea. He was actually the first presidential science advisor. And he had this idea that the government should fund science so it can do science research to help people. So he helped do the Manhattan Project and all this other stuff. This is pretty fun, actually. This taco is really like fun to eat, but it's really loud, I think, probably in the microphone. So if you're a scientist, wow. I actually have even more Taco Bell in this bag. But anyway, so if you're a scientist and you're thinking about getting involved in Capitol Hill, my one big takeaway for you is that you don't have to do a big internship to get involved in Congress. That's the great thing about government and democracy is you can participate in it without like having like specific credentials. The only requirement is um, that you're interested in Congress. You can work on political campaigns. You can intern in Congress if you like dedicating your time for free to help government go more smoothly. There's actually a lot of space for scientists to be to be plugged in in policy issues. Like think about some of the major issues we have, like obviously the climate, COVID, but also energy, defense, research, um, agriculture, food security. I don't know. I never understood why the Senate side was so much more calm than the House side. It has fewer people. It's also more difficult to get a job in the Senate as an intern than it is in the House. There are fewer people you represent in the House than in the Senate. Let's get our last thing. So I also got, because I literally just said everything that, come, that came to my mind. I also got nachos. My camera is not like super good. I actually got like a new camera. I don't know if you can notice and tell. This got soggy because I was talking for so long. I really like Taco Bell. When I worked in Congress, I ate at We the Pizza every day. It's like a pizza place where you can get like jumbo slice. Working in Congress is very rewarding. It also makes me feel very powerful. Like one day, my job was to edit a brief um, press release about veterans or something. It was something that um, the congressman I was working for was involved in legislatively. There's a lot of skills I learned in Congress that I couldn't learn in science. Being professional, relating to people on a personal level, communicating in a style that really resonates with people. Because scientists don't really communicate in a style that resonates with people. They communicate about scientific rigor. Like, it's rare to find a scientist. Well, scientists are good communicators. I've found some scientists are good communicators, many, but 
politicians are like truly like good communicators like Ronald Reagan is known as the great communicator so I don't know what else to say about Congress it's really fun to work in Congress I definitely encourage any scientists that are interested in working there especially if you like thinking about like different things you don't have to do legislative stuff like me I was a legislative intern so I was um I briefed the members of Congress and their staff member of Congress and their staff on policy priorities like basically everything that was happening like I just went to like a bunch of briefings and it was pretty awesome because you're plugged in on like especially a lot of the briefings I went to they actually end up becoming the foundation for laws years later working in Congress is really fun it's really fast-paced but Congress itself is very slow and clunky which is like I think it was designed to be like that from the founding fathers it's like um it is what it is that was my first mukbang. I feel like I ate more than I talked. But if you have any questions about working in Congress, feel free to chime in. And I'll be back with my other mukbangs about the executive branch and also the judicial branch. Thanks for watching my first mukbang ever. I have a nutritionist appointment later today. So, oh yeah, I wanted to mention that if you're interested in interacting with the legislative system, that you don't have to work in Congress. You can work on any city council meetings. That's one place where you can be active state government. There's a lot of stuff happening in state legislatures right now. Um, you can definitely be participating in that. You don't have to go for the like Tip O'Neill said, and he, this is a really famous quote, all politics is local. So the more local you can get, the more likely you have to make an impact. And um, But you have to continue to be engaged with the policy process. And it's not without its fair share of setbacks. I worked on a campaign to elect um, Brad Carson, who used to be a representative in Oklahoma. He's a moderate Democrat. Now he's president of the University of Tulsa. Go Golden Hurricanes. That was a very, we won the primary and then he lost to Tom Coburn. And actually I ate Taco Bell every day when I, when I worked on that. So that's pretty cool. But the cool part, the uncool part was he lost. I just read an article that said that that was one of the best run campaigns of that election cycle. It was like in 2004. So Taco Bell is essential in my mind for legislative advocacy, any kind of legislative work. I hope you enjoyed this video. Of all the three branches of government, the legislative system is where I've done the most. So I feel like I know the most about it. And you can't go wrong with Taco Bell. So thank you, Katie Porter, for representing Taco Bell's um, headquarters in the Congress. I looked at a bunch of other companies as well. Like I learned that Pramila Jayapal, Jayapal represents Starbucks. So this is really delicious. Thanks for watching. As scientists, we can totally engage in the political sphere because the skills we have are truly valuable. We don't just do nothing every day or do something really insignificant. The only thing we need to do is figure out how to communicate what we do in a way that everyone can understand, which is something that if you worked in Congress, you know that People in Congress are very good at that. And scientists can get good at that too. So cheers, my fellow political aficionados. Till next time.